Welcome to Pathways of Hope. My name is Lucy Taka and I will be sharing with you my reflections on the gospel for today taken from Luke chapter 4 verses 16 to 30. The story in the gospel happened shortly after Jesus was tempted in the desert. He had begun his ministry and seemed to have done wonders in Capernaum. Jesus was a devout Jew and went to the synagogue regularly. In this scene, Jesus, after reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, says the Spirit of the Lord is upon him and then declares his mission, that is, to proclaim good news to the poor, bring sight to the blind, liberate the captives and oppressed, and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The people listening to him, most likely connecting what he said to what he did in Capernaum, wanted him to also perform wonders there in Nazareth. Referring to incidents in the Old Testament, Jesus disabuses the people of the notion that his main purpose was to be a miracle worker. What is this gospel telling us? First, while God is capable of solving all our problems through miraculous signs and wonders, he does not do so. What could his reason be? He most likely knows doing that will not do us any good. Like the people in the gospel, we will probably devote all our time and attention to the miracles and seek our selfish ends rather than focus on Jesus and what he wants us to do. Jesus was clear about his mission and, as his disciples, the mission becomes ours too. What does it mean to proclaim the good news to the poor? The poor here means both those who are materially and spiritually poor. If we are to fulfill this mission, we ought to take the work of evangelization seriously and share the good news of our salvation to them. While Jesus is very mindful of the plight of the materially poor, his foremost concern is their eternal destiny. This does not mean we should neglect their situation. Included in our work of bringing the good news is to also do our best to help them rise above their situation. What about giving sight to the blind? Jesus is speaking not just about physical blindness, but also spiritual blindness. Physical blindness is an affliction only God can heal, but he allows us to participate in bringing about healing to the spiritually blind. There are many people blinded to the truth of God's love and mercy today. They have either become hard-hearted and refused to open their eyes, or have been misled deliberately or otherwise. It is our duty as disciples to awaken them and speak the truth to them until they listen and believe. We must persevere in this, especially as it is difficult to break walls and barriers. Providing liberty to captives and the oppressed means helping to free them from their bondage to sin. This begins with evangelization and then accompanying them in their journey of faith and ongoing conversion. This means making ourselves available to those in spiritual need by giving time, attention, comfort, and service to them. How are you participating in God's work? Are you helping to bring others back to or closer to Him? Are you speaking to others about Jesus' work of salvation so they can also receive the good news? Your words might just be what someone close to you needs to turn his or her life towards God. Are you helping to change the situation of the poor around you? Do you respond to the call to help others during this pandemic? As disciples, it is incumbent upon us to be generous with our material and other resources to those in need. In Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46, Jesus says that whatever we do or do not do to the least of his brothers, we do or do not do to him. Who are the least? The hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned. How do we minister to the spiritually blind? By leading them to the right path, that is, by speaking the truth to them. In our present society, many people think nothing of spreading fake information that have the effect of diverting attention from and sugarcoating the ills plaguing us, like corruption, murder, and immorality. We have to fight these lies with the truth. 
lies are the weapon of the evil one to disguise its evil deeds. If we tolerate the lies and evil deeds, we become complicit with those who commit them. As disciples, we have to stand up for what is right. There is a popular saying which says, The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. This call is particularly urgent in our country today. Let us do our part to fight against the evil around us. We are also obliged to help free those in bondage to sin. We must not be afraid to confront them with the truth that sin leads to death and that Jesus, on the other hand, is offering them life. We must ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in this and must be willing to invest time to do this. Finally, we are called to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Lord's favor is His grace, unmerited goodness He showers upon us. Foremost among these are the gifts of salvation, of intimacy with Him, of the power of the Holy Spirit, and the ability and opportunity to serve Him. The blessings we receive are not meant for us alone. We must share them especially to the people we call the least, the lost, and the last, the poor, the blind, those in bondage. We ought to be bearers of hope to them in words and deeds and continue the mission of Jesus for them. Then only can we truly call ourselves his disciples. God bless you.